Hi, my name is Christopher Dodgen, and this is my testimony. I've been putting this off for a long time um, because my testimony is quite long and um, I have shared my testimony to a few people I always felt like I was casting my pearls and you may ask it's your testimony it should bring people to Christ you're right. I'm nobody special. I, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody special. But my testimony, it's hard for people to hear sometimes. And I've been putting this off for quite some time because I didn't know if I should share my testimony. But I do believe it's time to share my testimony. So Father, Holy Spirit, I ask you to give me the words to speak. In Jesus' name. Help me to bring everything you want me to do to speak. In Jesus' name. Let me begin when I was a child. I never, when I was a kid, I never really understand the spiritual um, aspect. Uh, I didn't, I remember going to Sunday school, but I just, it was just a place to go to Sunday school and color and learn songs of Jesus, but I didn't. So, my journey. Because my journey is my testimony. I, I want to say I started in Houston um, on 59. There is a fiesta on North Side, and my house used to be across the street of that fiesta. And um, my first encounter of the spiritual realm. I, um, I was a young kid, maybe about four or five years old, and um, I went to use the restroom, and um, there was this particular room in this house that I was afraid of, but um, that, that was the only room that had the bathroom besides my parents' bathroom. Um, so this is the only uh, restroom that me and my brother uh, could use. So I went onto the potty, the toilet, and I was using the restroom, and um, the door slammed, just slammed and it scared me I jumped up I opened the door and there was no one in the room I pulled my pants up ran towards um, 
my mother, because my dad wasn't at home at the time, and I ran t for my mother, and she was outside. And um, the slamming doors was a common thing. Um, then one day, uh, my my parents started going to church. I guess they came home from church. We came home from church one day, and um, all I remember is my dad had records of you know Pink Floyd and and different artists of rock and roll and stuff. And I remember hearing my dad say that um, we're Christian now. We need to get rid of these things or something that he, he had to get rid of them in the mix of him getting rid of these records he decides to play one and that's when he started speaking in a deeper uh, he spoke into a different tongue and, and a different um, voice that I've it wasn't my dad and it scared me tremendously. It scared my mom, it scared my brother. It was something we didn't know what this was. I remember my mom saying she's calling the pastor to come and pray. And on the phone with my, my mom's on the phone with the pastor and the pastor's telling her the things to say and um, I remember my dad fighting against the words that my mom was speaking and me and my brother were scared we were huddled, huddled up um, in the living room floor and um, we wanted to be by our parents because we didn't feel safe in the house and I remember looking on the ground and it was the strangest things I saw rows of ants just like rows of ants one line of ants heading towards my dad and another line of ants heading towards my dad and another line, I have to say at least six, seven lines of ants diagonally in a row, not swerving or anything, just straight line to my dad. And I remember the pastor came inside, the pastor's wife or somebody said, take the kids outside. I remember me and my brother was being escorted outside and I went to go look back and if I remember correctly it was like a force or something that pushed him up against the wall not by a pastor not by my mom but a force that could not see it's the first time I've seen anything spiritually in the spiritual realm which I was a young kid I, I could I, I didn't know what that was maybe a few months after that my parents decided to move out of the house and um, we left that place and uh, I was around five or six and I remember we had stayed at an apartment complex. We moved from the house to an apartment complex. I used to go and play with um, the kids in the apartment complex. And uh, I played in hide and go seek. And uh, next to this apartment complex was this field. And it was a, it was a, it was a huge field. And I decided that I wanted to, um, I remember I wanted to be like the A-team. I wanted to be like, like Army. I wanted to hide in the grass. 
Well, I run into the field, and in the mix of this field was maybe two and a half feet tall brick round um, wall that was round and a couple of pieces of plywood on top of it and I thought perfect place to hide that's it that's the thought that entered my mind instantaneously so I move the piece of cardboard uh, the, the not the cardboard the, the piece of plywood I moved it out of the way and it was a giant hole a well of some sort it was a giant hole and I want to say it was just enough wide it was like two and a half feet wide and it I, there it couldn't see the bottom and I remember going up to the edge and looking down and a thought came in my mind to jump in and I'll never forget it to this day when I was just about to consider of jumping in and I barely moved it was like I was ready to do it and right there right above me right here above the well was an angel and and I, I, I don't know I, I, I tried to search in scriptures I, I I don't I, I I know the Bible says there's no male or female in 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 heaven but this angel was a female I, I, there's no doubt about it this was a female angel I, I can't explain it I searched in scriptures um, there's people say that you know there is female uh, names uh, of angels in the Bible but I haven't found any but I know what I saw and I know what I experienced so I'm seeing this angel and it was white bright white and it the edges was kind of see-through and especially the bottom because I didn't see no legs or feet but it was a silhouette uh, and it just faded and the most overwhelming peace that I've ever had, I, I can still feel it to this day. But the angel told me, said, Chris, go home to your mother right now. And I did exactly that. I turned around and ran. I told my mom, and I told my dad, but I don't, I don't, I don't think they believed me. I think they brushed it to the side. But um, I, I'll never forget it. It's, it is the only time I've ever seen. A Those angel. are my earliest experience with uh, the spiritual realm, the good and the bad. So you may be asking, why am I telling you these stories of my life? Because this is part of my testimony. This is, this is leading up to who I am today. Wasn't bad kid. I listened to my parents. I did rebel, you know, like all kids do, they rebel. Uh, my parents started going into ministry. Sorry, I had to my recorder only records every 30 minutes so my parents started going into ministry and started getting in into God and um, it just seemed like every 
where my parents took me. I was always prophesied on of great things. And not just one minister from countless of different ministers. Been raised of listening to prophets and prophetesses, prof, prophetess and, and, and multiple different pastors and preachers from every ethnic, every denomination that you can think of. So I was about 12, 13 years, well, I was 12, almost 13 years old. And um, I lost my virginity to uh, the girl across the street. Um, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Um, we were playing house, and uh, she wanted me. She wanted to show me what her parent, what she saw her parents do the previous night, and she wanted to try it. Um, that that's when I lost my virginity and that's when the um, the thorn in my flesh started happening yeah um, boy the enemy really likes to make you feel guilty. I felt guilty to almost 14 years old because of that. And, 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 it, and, it, and it wasn't forced or anything. It's just me knowing that I lost my virginity. And I was always told um, that I needed to save it for marriage. But how could I when I lost my virginity? So the enemy always really beat me up about that. So, we had moved to another place, and um, my parents started going to this church. Now, this church was literally right next door to a satanic church, a real satanic church. And believe it or not, you know, there were there they were real satanic churches in Houston, and it was open up front. You know, people knew about it, but they stayed away. But the church that we were attending was literally right next door, and the only thing that separated these two buildings was a field. So the satanic church. Um, which they not only worship satanic, but they worship Wicca, and they worship um, um, white witch stuff, or whatever, whatever all that stuff is. So that place was just on maybe an acre, and the church that we were on was like 20 acres. It was a field that surrounded the church. Well, we attended to this church, and I want to say it wasn't too long after we started going there. Maybe about six months we started going to this church, and all of a sudden the church divided over, if I recall, something the most stupidest thing ever. The church literally split. And people stopped going to the church both sides they stopped going to figure out what was the next step for that church so at this point people were not even attending church the church was destroyed over one Sunday and it uh, was completely destroyed of a congregation and then my mom had said that the Lord told me to go and pray over that church and walk around, walk around the church seven times. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. 
I'll go. I want to go. So, I went with my mom. My my brother and my dad stayed at home. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't want to go. Um, so we get to the church. It was like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night. And my mom had anointing oil. And I had a lantern. I was maybe about. 10, 11, no, no. See, I'm about 13 years old. 13, 16, yeah, it was about, yeah, I was 13, 13 years old. It's when I was 13, 13, 14 years old. So I get out of the car. And. My mom says that the Lord told her to walk around the facility seven times and pray. The, not the church, but the actual property. 20 acres of it. And then on the seventh time to anoint the church and sprinkle anointing oil on top of the church. So... <clears throat> I'm holding the lantern. It's in the middle of nowhere. Um, no lights. The only lights there were from our car at the beginning of the property. And the lantern that I had in my hand. And uh, my mom says, stay behind me. I'm going to walk ahead. Hold the lantern. And, and and I will pray and 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 you know. So we begin. We begin on this property. And I want to say about the third time, the third time around, things felt really dark. It almost seemed like the stars weren't, you couldn't see the stars no more. And it seemed like my lantern light wasn't bright, as bright. But we still kept pressing on. About the fourth time. I started seeing shadows between me and my mother like that and I was flipping out and my mom says keep your eyes keep your thoughts on Jesus keep your thoughts on Jesus so I'm praying Jesus protect us you know Jesus help us Jesus protect us send your angels to protect us and my mom kept saying just just say Jesus just say Jesus it's all you gotta say is Jesus so the shadows was just constant it was I mean it couldn't have been no animal it couldn't have been uh, because they they the 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 grass didn't move because it was it was it was a little tall grass because the field they didn't cut all the field so the grass didn't move but shadows was definitely all around us so we get to the end of the sixth turn and my mom starts heading towards the church And I told my mom, I said, what are you doing? We got, we have to do it seven times. And she goes, we did. I said, no, we didn't. That was six. We need to do seven. And she thought, she goes, you know what? You're right. Well, we get back onto the path. And let me tell you that, la oh, uh, Thank you, Jesus. That last time that we went around that field. Whew. 
the evilness of such thickness was present so much I never forget it and let me tell you I that last seventh walk around that field was the longest the longest walk around that field it I, I can't explain it I can't explain it it was longer than all the rest of the walks and we were walking the same pace I can't explain it but it was the longest so we finally finished it the seventh and we go to the church and my mother's speaking in tongues and praising the Lord and 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 just doing whatever the Lord was telling her and, and spraying anointing oil on top of the roof of this church and I seen this huge giant black figure demonic force coming out of the roof of that church and I was like whoa and my mom was like whoa you see that it was the freakiest tallest thing I've ever seen and it screamed and then it just seemed like right after that it just seemed like everything was bright again you could see the stars my lantern was bright again I noticed for some reason I during the walks I really didn't notice the beam how bright the beams of the car was until now uh, and it was like peace And we get into the car, and my mom is talking to me and explaining to me a little bit more about the demonic forces and demons and angels and, and things like that. I know a little bit about it, but I didn't know, <sighs> never know, you know, from when I was younger, when I did see it, to now, because I'm older and start learning more. It's a different perspective. You see what I'm saying? So, that was a pretty intense uh, experience of in my youth. So, um, fast forward, and, um, I've had uh, in I started growing a beard in high school and you know friends would give me pornography and I got really addicted to pornography I um, could go to a convenience store and buy a pornography magazine and I would be only 16 years old they would never card me this is in Houston all the time. Um, I encountered a lot of lust in my life, especially my youth uh, and young adult and adult. Uh, it, it, it has been truly a thorn in my flesh. So. <clears throat> I lived in Houston pretty much my whole life and um, my 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 mom decided that um, God told her to sell the house and move outside of Houston more towards the country so my mom put it on the market and it sold within a few days and 
Um, <clears throat> my, my mom didn't know where we were going to get a house at. Um, the Lord told her to get in the car and just drive, guide her to this piece of land and uh, didn't have a for sale sign that was posted up uh, and the Lord said this is it uh, she looked down and the sign for the for sale sign was in a ditch covered with grass so no one could really see it just on the corners of it she called the number the guy says yeah I just want to get rid of it here's you know take take half of it I mean I, I think it was like five acres for ten thousand dollars it was super super cheap so we moved to this place and uh, my parents started getting heavily more into um, ministry now in this time in my life um, I, 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 I attend church uh, the group of kids that I uh, grew up in high school with, uh, we started the Christian organization in the morning where we read our Bible or talk about something about Christ or church. So we started that movement in school, reading in the cafeteria, things like that, going around the halls and start witnessing to people. Um, but yeah, that you know that that's always I, we 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 did that. Uh, but we now we moved and we go to outside of Houston in my senior year in high school, and it was quite different. So I come from the city life where uh, it was mostly blacks and Mexicans, and it was maybe five percent white you know and I grew up very urban I grew up you know police shooting every day uh, ambulance I mean you click on the news in the morning times and, and we were expecting a, a car chase to watch before we go to school that was just everything to see drive-by shootings I mean that was just everyday thing so we moved to the to the outsides of Houston and it was more of a farm community it was more of a country style I did not like it at all I did not like the bugs I did not like it was super quiet uh, it was just completely different and I mean it was I was like man it's so boring there's no place to go what the heck you know this is what is this place you know um, but you know I I, I started anew my senior year I'm in high school and I just try to start things brand new again I mean I, I had all my friends in Houston everybody that I knew was in Houston and I have to start all over especially in my senior year so I asked around if there was a Christian organization in the morning times there wasn't so I decided to go ahead and start that so I can at least have that in the morning times and just uh, tried to meet new friends that were Christians and um, that started started going and um, like I said my mom my parents started getting into ministry and they started um, going around to these different churches and different places uh, that was set up by um, um, some guy that was there he, he his main job was to get new ministers and and have them preach at different churches to to get them started and um, there was this one church it, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a Baptist church a, a white Baptist church in the middle of nowhere nowhere in the backwoods and it was like a white church it was paint it was just you know it was like one of those things you see in a movie it was, it was unlike Houston because Houston 
there's different varieties of churches. I'm used to big church, but this was like a country church, a country country church. So my mom was preaching, and um, I went with her for a few services, and this church. They didn't believe in speaking in tongues. They didn't believe in standing up, raising their hands. They didn't. They, they didn't believe in anything. It was just a, a dead church. Needed a revival. That's exactly what was happening. It needed a revival, and a revival came. So the Lord spoke to me, and He says, "I want you to sit in the front row." And every time. There is a song or anything being praised to me. You stand up and raise your hand, no matter if anybody else does or not. Now, mind you, I've got all these people behind behind this side of the church, behind me, and that side of the church, and it's it was about 60, 70 people there. And, you know, some of those old churches has that smell, and it has that that musty wooden old smell and, and those those uh, those red cushions that you sit on that you know if you slide the whole thing comes off the the whole entire bench <laughs> yeah but it, it was it was an old church I can still smell that musty smell a lot of churches have that I don't know why all some of these churches have that musty smell but anyway that's besides the point so Somebody started singing, and, and there was old school hymns, you know, uh, which there's nothing wrong with old old school hymns, you know. But, you know, there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood. That kind of music, you know. <sighs> you know, just monotone, everybody's saying the same thing, and it's just no life. So I get up, okay Lord, I get up and I start praising God. Thank you Lord. Power, power, wonder working power. And I, I'm, I'm getting into it. And I'm thinking, don't look over because I know all of these people have their eyes on the back of my head. <laughs> but I got to do this because this is what God told me to do. So I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And uh, it was going great. First couple of services, boom, 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 it was great. People were getting saved. Uh, people were getting healed. It was amazing. God was moving. God was moving. And towards the end, I want to say, because it was a week-long event, towards the end, Friday, I did look and I started seeing people getting up during the service. Thank God I wasn't the only one standing up. <laughs> but but things were starting to revive itself. You know what I'm saying? People were actually getting engaged. It's Friday night. A guy stands up uh, and has a heart attack. Bam! And... I, I looked, I, I was concerned, the whole congregation is concerned, like, oh my gosh, this guy's having a heart attack. And I look at my mom, because she was preaching, and I look at my mom, I was like, God. and my mom goes, nope, God told me to keep preaching. It's a, it is a distraction from the enemy. So she kept preaching. She didn't stop. So, ambulance came, got the guy, he ended up being fine. But, um, but that night, that night, huh, this woman came up for prayer. She
she says, she goes up to my mom, she goes, my daughter needs prayer. My daughter needs prayer. She has demons in her. She has demons in her. My mom goes, okay, bring it. So this young girl comes and she, you know, she has the black eyeliner and the black lipstick and the black uh, collar and the black clothes and, you know, the whole nine yards. But you can't always judge a person by what they wear, okay? Look at her. Look at my daughter. She has demons in her. You need to cast them out. Cast these demons out of my daughter. So my mom goes, come here. So my mom started praying for her. And my, my mom was praying for her. And, and, and of course, I'm there. I'm supporting. I'm praying. And my mom starts praying. And she stops. And she goes, ma'am, there is no demons in this girl. Not at all. She's not possessed. She may be influenced by things, but she's not possessed. But the Lord keeps telling me it is, it, it, there's something strong in your house, and your house needs to be cleansed. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. My daughter, look at my daughter. Look what she is wearing. She's got demons. Cast these demons out. So my mom's like, started praying for her. She goes, no. God told me that she is fine. She may be a little confused in life, but she is fine. God is telling me there's something in your house that is heavenly strong that needs to be cleansed. So the woman's like, okay. So the whole church, the whole church, we dismiss right then and there. Me, my mom, pastor pastor wife this lady and her daughter we get in our cars and we follow this lady to her house and i'm talking about backwoods like country fire country fire it's somewhere in texas i mean in the middle of nowhere and i'm talking about the streets weren't paved it was dirt anyway we get to this house and it's a shotgun house now i don't know if you know what a shotgun house is but in the south, the shotgun house is where you open the front door and you can shoot uh, through the back door. I mean, it's, it's just a long, narrow house, front, back, that's it. So it's a shotgun house in the middle of nowhere. So we get out of the car. Well, on the way there, I start praying. Uh, to God and start reading uh, Ephesians 6 the, the armor of God and the protection and, and uh, you know getting us ready getting us getting that mindset of, of cleaning the house and I, I've been on a lot of going to people's houses and cleaning now mind you I'm 17 years old okay I've been to maybe a dozen house cleansing Nothing like this one. So I'm doing the thing. I'm, I'm reading Ephesians 6. I'm getting my mind on God. Keeping my mind on Christ. Um, you know, just reading the God's word. Asking the Holy Spirit to guide us and all this stuff. So we get to this place. We get out. I come around, I start heading towards the front of the house. And the Lord spoke to me right then and there. He said, do not, do not go in the hallway or the bedrooms. Thus saith the Lord thy God. I was like, I mean, it's not like, it's hard to explain when you actually hear God's voice you 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 know you know i mean you know that you know that you that that you know okay so i said i told my mom i said i'll be praying but the lord told me not to go in the bedrooms or the hallway 
okay so we get in there and actually there is the living room kitchen back door and then off to the side is a little hallway with two rooms so it's still a shotgun house it's just the rooms are off onto the side so it's okay well there's a hallway and there's the rooms I'm not supposed to go back there so this Baptist preacher he's not he 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 doesn't really believe in speaking in tongues or, or anything like this nature but he's curious because he's he's actually seeing miracles he's actually seeing people get saved and it, it's 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 sparking a fire within him you know what I'm saying so he comes to exert what this is all about you know what I'm saying it's not like it just seemed like he hadn't read the stuff in the Bible and if this stuff was in the Bible that was just for old times and it never happens in a new time <laughs> so this was new for him but so he was kind of you know kicking staying you know just chilling back praying to himself and I'm in the living room and I promise you all right the, so the lady she's the first one obviously it's her house she warns her husband that we're coming in yeah yeah that's fine the daughter comes and they automatically all three sit on the couch right there in the living room so my mom comes in and she goes straight to the back bedroom just straight to the back bedroom didn't say hi didn't say nothing just she just goes straight to the back bedroom and she, you can hear her from back there that she is praying strongly Okay, so I'm praying, and mind you, we already anointed ourselves. We prayed for over ourselves for protection and the blood of Christ, and and uh, I'm sitting there in the living room, and I'm seeing a pastor. He's just kind of going back and forth, you know, talking a little bit about to the family, going back and forth to my mom, and just kind of walking around, just observing what's going on. So I'm in the living room, I start praying, and I'm just praying, Father, just cleanse this house in the name of Jesus. Father, cleanse this house in the name of Jesus. Father, cleanse this house in the name of Jesus. And I promise you, when I opened my eyes and I looked, now in the middle of the kitchen, there is this bar, or uh, an island. And this particular kitchen had the stove on the island and I saw this old wrinkly white white lady evil 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 looking extremely grayish whitest hair I mean it, it wasn't full it was just strands just little strands long hair and she had a pot a pot uh, 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 um, uh, maybe two foot pot I mean it was a pot a big pot and it was on the stove and she now on the other side of the pot I couldn't see what she was doing and she chopped something and she picked it up and and of course the pots here and I can't see it until she lifted it up past it so I could see what it was and it was an infant baby and she dropped it in the pot to boil it and then she looked right at me and it was like I was froze froze every fiber in me my hair just went and goose and I, I I saw right in her eyes and they were deep deep dark can't explain it and I said oh Jesus and I just started praying Lord Jesus Lord Jesus Lord Jesus and I just started rebuking rebuking the demonic force in this and I and it was just all of a sudden this boldness with inside me just started just rebuking the demonic force that had hold on this house and just started rebuking, rebuking, rebuking. <clears throat> Pastor was a little freaked out that I, all of a sudden I, uh, I just started 
but uh, he, he started coming back into the prayer thing again and I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying and when the Lord tells you instructions not to do something you better do it my dumb butt walks in the hallway now I don't go to the room I don't go to the room my mom's in she's praying I don't go in that room but I go to the first room You know when the Lord tells you to do something, it's for your good. Because He loves you. I opened that door to that bedroom. And I literally saw hooks on that ceiling with infants' bodies hanging from them with no blood. It was like it was drained out of them. And it was at least 40 or 50 of them. And it scared, it, 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 it didn't scare me. It sickening, grossing me, and terrif, yeah, terrifying me, shocking me all at once. And it was a dramatic hit onto just the energy just sucked out of me I oh Jesus I instantaneously I knew I was wrong because when I was doing it I didn't realize oh the Lord told me not to do this uh, you know I'm gonna do it anyway it wasn't like that it, it was it was just something I forgot that the Lord because I was so in tune of of rebuking the enemy and the demonic forces of the stronghold in this house that I just forgot what the Lord told me so I wandered off and 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 as soon as I saw that I instantly in my mind was reminded of what God told me and and knowing that I was in the wrong and I was being taken back of what I seen and between the two bedrooms was a bathroom and when I was taken back I looked into the bathroom and there was a woman that was giving birth out of the 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 uh, 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 bathtub and and she was giving she was giving birth with of the baby in the bathtub and, and giving it for a sacrifice flip me out oh my gosh I I went back into the living room I called my mom I said mom you need to pray for me right now I'm just blown away by the things I've seen and she goes hang on move this bed right now Chris you need to stay in the living room so she's calling the pastor she's calling the the uh, uh, the people that own the house or renting it or whatever whatever the case may be I don't know. so they run to the bedroom she said gotta move this bed out of the way move it move it move the bed and she's not she's not my mom she didn't care about you know these people's furniture <laughs> or not she was on a mission move this bed move it so they, they move this bed Moved the rug from underneath it, and it was a huge, giant pentagram in the middle of underneath this bed. Huge! Oh my gosh! A, a live person could could lay in it, and it's they couldn't cover it. It was huge. It, it was huge, and it was underneath this rug or uh, uh, a big, giant rug or whatever it was. So they pulled it up. Man, they, this Baptist pastor started, 
praying hard. <laughs> he was praying hard. My mom was praying hard. The, the, the parents were praying hard and everything. And I was just, I was, I was drained. Uh, I was, I, I, I was drained. I, um, I, I, I was drained. I knew I shouldn't have went in that room and, and, and saw what I saw, but it, it, it drained me. So, sat down on the couch with the young lady and you know I was talking to her a little bit and then um, I want to say about an hour of them praying they came out and then um, it felt such a peace in a house after that um, and then uh, we, we once we felt a peace in that house, um, we gave our blessings and um, we educated them a little bit more about um, not allowing things in their house that would bring demonic forces and things like that and, and to constantly um, cleanse your house and keep your house cleansed and holy and stuff. And so we left. and. Um, I want to say the the revival was over. I want to say the following weekend, and we we became like this lady called my mom every day asking questions and stuff. So I want to say the weekend after that, the parents of the house, the the, the people that lived in the house, called my mom and says, "Oh my gosh." A lady that your son described exactly to the T drove up in our driveway, got out of the car and started cussing us out and started saying weird things to us and she was pissed off about something, got in her car and drove off. And we were like, whoa, she's still alive? <laughs> That's what I was, that was the first thought I was in my mind. But uh, apparently, uh, what I gathered over time was that that house had opened a portal to for, to hell or something. It was a, I, I I don't know all the satanic rituals that they do and stuff, but I know they do sacrifice babies. I know that for sure. And people get pregnant just specifically for a sacrifice. They don't even they don't even have kids just to raise them. They have them just specifically for sacrifice. I know but apparently this place that we cleansed uh, was one of those places that had a portal opened or, 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 or some kind of connection to the, the dark side and obviously uh, by the power of Christ the power of God blocked that um, access uh, and it's no longer there so uh, and I guess that's the reason why the lady got really mad so whew. all right so that was my senior year and um, high school the first part the first semester so as I was doing good I was getting really heavy in God I started reading my Bible every day learning learning his word I got a my uncle had gave me one of those big strong blue strong concordance and looking up what words mean in, in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and I was really studying the Bible and uh, I mean I've been studying the Bible my whole life but I was at this time in my stage I was really focusing on it and then um, I ran into this girl. I don't know her last name, but I'm gonna say her name is Megan. But uh, I, I don't—I forgot her last name. But I was instantly attracted to her. 
instantly. Now, mind you, I'm trying to focus on God, and then all of a sudden, just whoosh, I was focusing on her. This girl, I fell into the trap. I, I, uh, she, now, mind you, I haven't lost. I lost my virginity at 12, but I hadn't had sex all the way up until this point when I met this chick, senior year in high school. And she got me all into that super quick and she was open and was no restrictions. So my mind was blown. Um, just I stop reading the Bible. I stop going to the Christian uh, things in the morning. I just stop completely talking like I was a Christian and I was completely devoted to this girl. So stupid. So stupid. So <laughs> this this girl I mean, I, it was like I was under a spell or something. It was, it was strong. It got to the point, and I don't know how this was, but after lunch, I still had four periods left until school was over. And every single one of these teachers knew exactly what me and this girl would go and do. We would go in the woods and have sex. And each of one of these teachers knew exactly what we were doing. But they said, okay, go ahead, do it. And not on top of that, not only they knew what we were going to do, and not only that they gave, okay, go do what you kids do, but they did our work for us in those grades. Made A's in those grades. I've never done none of the work. How is that possible? I still to this day I'm like, man, you know they can get in trouble for that. You know, how 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 could that be? Seriously. But it happened. It happened. Not only for me, but for her too as well. So this went on strong and I remember the condom broke and she changed like her her whole sweetness and her whole agenda of being all into me changed and she ran from me and she went past the woods and she jumped over a fence into the neighborhood uh, the the um, hotel there was a there was a hotel because uh, the school's somewhere in a little residential or a little there was a there was a hotel or a motel but there was a swimming pool she jumped over uh, the fence and jumped in a swimming pool to get it all all of it out and I thought that was like extremely strange and then she got out and she took a towel and I was dumb me I, I thought I was in love but it wasn't love I was like I, 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 I want, I'll raise the kid you don't even gotta worry about it she goes no I'm not pregnant just like that I'm not pregnant and then the very next day I had a dream of something something horrible it was it was a terrifying dream it, it, it kind of scared me and, and so I I asked the Lord I said you know father I, I you know I'm not doing right with you you know I'm doing all kinds of crazy things and I'm sorry and forgive me and stuff and uh, she uh <clears throat> I I, I was like, Lord, you know, I'm I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna I'm gonna break up with her, you know, because this is, I know I I, I went way off, you know. 
And I, when I went to go confront her and tell her that I was going to break up with her, um, she goes, oh, I heard, be, before I even said anything, before I said anything, she goes, hey, doesn't that church that your mom goes to, don't they have a youth group? I said, yeah, a matter of fact, they have a, a thing tonight. She goes, let's go to it. Okay, and well, in my mind, I was like, well, maybe God changed your mind, you know, maybe, maybe God changed your heart. And I'm like, oh yeah, all right, cool, all right. <laughs> so we get to this youth thing at my mom's church. And the youth pastor saying this is a, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a sleepover. It's, it's a sleepover uh, thing for the youth that are at the church. And, uh, and we're going to have games, we're going to have video games, we're going to talk about God, we're going to do all kinds of things, right? Okay. Well, so happened to be, there was a tent. Like a, like a two-person tent at this church. One. Just one. And she convinced the youth pastor that uh, for us to... She didn't, she didn't feel comfortable of staying inside the church. Uh, uh, she didn't feel comfortable, but she wanted to stay inside the tent outside. And, and then, you know, somehow or another... We didn't sleep inside the church. We slept in the tent outside. Only one. And it's just me and her. On church grounds. Now how is this possible? I I I I don't I don't know. I, I But let me tell you, after that night, oh my gosh, knowing that I had sex on church grounds and not not only not only that we did on church grounds but the next morning while everybody was getting loaded up and fixing to leave she had sex with me inside the church do you know how long the enemy has held that over my head I thought I was bound to go to hell like 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 crazy. I was such in guilt, such in torment of that ordeal. It, it just fear, fear. I was constantly in fear to the point where I broke it off with her. I, I couldn't I couldn't take it no more. Um and come to find out, um, like the day, the day after, the day after I broke up with her, she called me up and she said, I am sorry, I still want to be with you. I burned all my tarot cards, I burned all my witch books, I burned all these soothsaying books and all this stuff. I want to serve. God and I want to be with you. Do what? Do, what? What? Say that again. She goes, "Yes, I am changed. I am changed. I am changed." I'm sorry. I I can't. I can't be with you. I, I I I only seen her one time after that, and it was about four months after I seen her, one time at school, and then she moved, her whole family moved. That was the only time I ever met her. I mean, that, that, I mean that's the last time I seen her. And I was here. Now I'm way down here, 
and I feel like I, I'm definitely lost. I lost my path. I got off the path to Christ big time. I was battling, just, just battling. I, I, the guilt of me actually having sex inside of a church and on church grounds was so strong. It, it was really, it, it, it oh, constantly, every day, just constantly guilt, constantly fear, constantly, constantly, constantly. And then that's when it happened. Now, everything I said to this point is 100% true, 100% accurate. You know, I, I don't care if you believe me or not. I know my life and what I've been through. And I don't mind doing a testimony of what I just said. But what I'm about to tell you, I've told people, I've told certain people in my life, but I don't tell everybody until God releases me to tell people. And so it is time for me to do my testimony. So at this time in my life, I was wonder if I blaspheme the Holy Spirit did I did I you know I'm gonna be you know I'm gonna be condemned I'm all this all the our guilt fear constant 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 every single day I went to my bedroom and I got on my knees Now, I have to say this. Be careful for what you speak out of your mouth. For you speak life or death, blessings or cursings. There is power in your tongue. So I go in my room, kneel down at my bed and I go father father do whatever it takes to get me right with you I got up, got in my bed, went to sleep. I woke up, but I wasn't at home. Thirty by thirty room that I was in. There was a light dust on the ground, and it went from like a, like a it was a, it was like a type of metal metalish structure or iron of some type. But it wasn't crafted by man. It was like a, a, a solid piece or something. But it was it was it was it was a room, thirty by thirty, and it faded into blackness. Oh, Jesus! 
in the middle of this room was a cylinder same material and it went up from the floor to the blackness now the cylinder is kind of sort of behind me in the middle of the room and from the cylinder to the wall was like a pipe of some sort and I'm, I'm, I'm standing there and I have no clothes on but I, 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 I wasn't concerned about my clothes or, or, or anything like that right then and there I thought where was I and it said I was in hell just I instantly knew where it was and the the overwhelming feeling of the distance between me and God was so strong like there's no way there's no way that I would ever get a chance to make it right with God like there is no chance for me to escape this place it's over it's done it is a done deal I can't get out of this place the record straight there is written there's no way I had cried out to God God what am I doing here I'm sorry please forgive me and I was repenting and repenting and repenting and there was nothing that I could do or say or anything to change it It was just an overwhelming, oh, the distance, the absence of God was so strong. It was unbearable. So along this wall that's in front of me, down by the other side of this wall, towards the end of the other side of the room, is like a doorway that went to an arch. No handles, only two little slits. And like, like when the sun reflects through blinds, it has those particles. It's kind of how it was. Red, red light coming from behind the door with particles and when I was there begging God forgive me get me out of here I am sorry and then knowing that my family I would never see my family again I mean it was the horrifying feeling that I would never be loved by God I, I, I will never have the opportunity to, to change. And, I, and the door opened. The door at the end of the room opened. And this, this beast came in. And granted, you know how apes walk right on these things? No, he, he walked on the flat part of the hand. Like, it, it was weird like that and he had a chest like uh, an, 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 um, a gorilla where it's kind of rubbery and the rest was like a brown blackish long hair werewolf kind of thing now you know how things come from like like a saber tooth tiger or it comes down like that no this these came up like this and he had real pointy, pointy ears. And I remember seeing his fingernails were like uh, uh, claws, like really long, sharp claws. Well, as soon as he came in the room, he started chasing me, just full force. And I ran, I turned around and that pipe that was behind me I ducked underneath it and I'm running around the cylinder in this room 
and I, when I went twice towards the door but the door was already shut and there was no handle so I kept running and this thing is constantly slashing me in the back trying to catch me just slashing me but couldn't quite catch me I was running fast and I kept going underneath the pipe constantly going around this thing and he would he would he would slash my back and try to get me but I and I could feel like razor blades slashing in my back like just tearing the skin and the muscles and the tendons off my back and 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 why he was doing it I could feel his his nails going against my spine as he's ripping the rest of my flesh off it was it, it was horrifying knowing that I'm running and my back's getting s slaughtered but he wasn't catching I was I was running with pure fear and terrified running away from this beast and then when I came back around another one exact they look identical came from the blackness right in front of me and I blacked out just blacked out I, I, I don't know what happened after that then I woke up or I opened my eyes I, I woke up in this vast it, it didn't seem like there was no walls anywhere around I could tell what was lit I was on uh, uh, like a brick kind of floor but I didn't see no walls or no ceilings or anything but I did see the floor a little bit and then it faded into the black and I look up right above me and it's right there in front of me because I'm looking and then all of a sudden there's right, up, right in front of me is the biggest and I knew it was heavy the biggest and the the heaviest plaque plaque I have ever seen ever ever and it was round it was a round thick heavy plaque and it kind of reminded me of the Aztec calendar round thing but different it's the only thing I can kind of compare it to but it, it's its own thing but there was writings all on the edges and just different writings and different symbols and stuff which I don't, I don't know but in the plaque there was three heads there was a the, there was a demonic head here which it, it it was like a man but kind of like I don't want to say alien but it was smoother it, it was a distorted human head. Let's just say that. And then there was a, another demonic head. Um, this one was more like uh, I, uh, I can't really uh, kind of kind of looks like some of the things from Star Wars a little bit, but I, I, I'm not sure. It, it, it's different. And then there's another demonic head. So you have three demonic heads in the middle of this plaque. And between them is uh, a triangle. So you got the head and you got a line. And you got the head and you got a line. And you got the head and you got the line, which makes a pyramid. And each corner of this pyramid was the demonic heads. And each inside of these lines were also writings and different symbols and and I, I did not see what was the center of the plaque that wasn't revealed to me but I looked at this grand huge plaque and the head looked right at me and he says we come here um, what do you say we come here to steal and he looked right at me and he's like we come here to steal looked right at me and he just echoed those words we come here to steal and then right after that the heads 
shift you know this one was over here now and the 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 uh, the second demonic head looked at me and um, we come here to kill right at me he said we come here to kill and then that shift to the third head and it looked at me and it says we come here to destroy and then I blacked out once again I don't I, I, I don't know where I, don't, I just blacked out right after that then I was woken up by extreme fire extreme fire and I open my eyes and I look down and there's little ambers of fire on my feet but the senses that I have down there was intensified a hundred percent it's like what we experience here on earth is only like ten percent of what we actually feel uh, down there or what I it was it was it was times by a hundred you, you know I've been burned before this times a hundred by that it, it, it just by a little amber of fire at my feet started melting the flesh and the muscles and the veins that were in my arm and hand started bursting and popping because it was so hot and I can literally feel the flesh melting off my bones and it was extremely painful it I, I, I can't and watching it happening it was feeling everything and, and, and you're not even passing out because the pain is so intensified but you can't pass out you're you're feeling every every moment of this melting on your physical body and you're just in trying to endure it but you really can't endure it you're you're just it's a horrifying terrific extremely high tense pain and I was watching this happen onto my hands and it going down and then <gasps> I was back at home in my bed just like that let me tell you what I jumped out of my bed, ran into my parents' room, turned that light off, and my mom was like, and my dad was like, oh my gosh, what happened to you? Your lips are extremely blue. Your skin, it looked like you seen a ghost or you died. And I said, I am petrified. I am scared scared to the bones and it took me a while to to tell him what happened because it was so traumatic um, it, it, that was it was it was traumatic I, I it was years years and years for me to not go to sleep with having a light on uh, you know so I mean I'm I'm you know of course it's still uh, sometimes sometimes I still have the light on you know I can't I can't sleep in pitch black but um, yeah it, it's 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 a uh, that that was my experience of hell and um, God always brings me back to that because you know 
people here here's here's the thing when, when I experienced hell you know of course that that's when I was in high school obviously I'm a lot older now and you know I made mistakes or I do something that I'm not supposed to and you know people say well you you went to hell you know why you know it's a real place why you do the things you do and I'm like you know I it, you know, sometimes I'm human. I for I, I I try not to keep hell on my mind the whole entire time, but it it is on the back of my mind all the time because I know that place is real. Um, but you know, we, but. That is something that I hold to myself to remind myself that that place is real because I've been there. And thank you, Jesus, that I am not there no more. And I am not going back to that place. Not. I'm going to do whatever I have to take to... to, to um, make it cool with me and God because I don't want to go to that place yeah I mess up I make mistakes but I gotta repent and I gotta move on I got I got I, I can't I, I, I I'm not going back to that place it, it was horrifying but um you know I've, I've I've got other stories too, but from that moment on was a really turning point in my life to really seek my Father, seek Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I have many stories of you know demonic forces and and demons and and um, succubus and and all all these other things you know I, I don't want to bring glory to the demonic force or anything like that but um, yeah that was my turning point of actually I know God's real there ain't no doubt ain't no doubt because I, I used to question there was a point in my life I used to question it if there was a God and show yourself and I cut, I even cut God out, which, you know, sometimes I know I'm forgiven. He 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 told me he forgives me, but you know, it's still it's it's still the fact that I I did that. But um, but yeah, that was a turning point in my life. And um, yeah. So this is my testimony um, of the major. A uh, turning point in my life to seek God and never stop. Um, like I said, this is my journey. This is my testimony, and um, I hope it blesses people and show that this place is real and the spiritual realm is real. And if you do not have Christ in your heart, my advice to you is to seek God and accept him because you're definitely not promised tomorrow in fact you're not even prep promised the next five minutes so i encourage you if you do not know the lord jesus christ as your personal savior i ask you to with all your heart all your mind and all your soul to cry out to him and he'll be there I promise you just give your life to him. That's it. It's not no formal set in stone prayer. You got to say that. And when you say it, boom, you're saved. It's not that at all. That is a false thing that's been passed down from generation to generation. Because so many people say that and they're not even saved. Because they don't do it out of the heart. That's the key. The heart. I love you. Be blessed and have a blessed day and um, 
just God is real. He loves you. He does not want anything bad happen to you. He's seeking after you. He doesn't want anything bad happen to you. So maybe it is time for me to share my testimony because maybe someone's heading to a path that is, leads down to a place that I did go and maybe they don't have a chance to come back. So, I love you.